So you want to retire in Thailand? Are you sure? Have you got enough money? These are all valid questions you'll get off your family and friends when you decide to tell them you're going to retire in Thailand. Your family and friends just want the best for you guys, you know? So they're going to ask you these questions. It's going to put you off a little bit, to be honest with you. When I moved to Thailand, I had the same thing, you know? My family, my friends are all asking me these questions, you know? Is it the right move? Are you sure you want to do this? What are you going to do for work? What if it doesn't work out? All these type of questions they kept asking. But you've got to think to yourself, guys, you know, it's your life. You've got to live your own life. You know, if it's your own dream that you want to move to Thailand and retire, you know, it's something you should probably do. You don't want to be in that rocking chair at 80, guys, thinking, oh, I wish I'd gone to Thailand. It's too late then, guys. You're going to be scared, man. You're going to be really scared, you know, coming over to Thailand to retire after 50. It's a scary thing to do. I mean, even when I came over here at 36, it was pretty frightening, to be honest with you. Because you are the other side of the world and, you know, your family and friends literally live the other side of the world. So it's a lot more difficult to have any kind of contact with them. But you're going to have fear wherever you are in life. If you stay in America or England or come over to Thailand, you know, you're going to have frightening things happen to you. You know, getting old is scary at times. Look at my little lads here. Ooh, loving life. Bye. Gonna suffer anyway, guys. You know, that's life. Life is suffering literally life means to suffer so why not suffer in you know a warm climate on the beach go where the fear is guys that's what i've done the last few years and it really works out if there's never a golden amount of money you're gonna have sometimes you have to just say okay it's time you know i want to change in my life and you know i'm gonna move to thailand or i'm gonna retire to thailand to make that decision and then tell your family and friends that you're doing this and then it's pretty definite then when you start actually telling them you're going so it kind of commits you to going then this leads on to money you know you, you know you do need a certain amount of money to retire in thailand like i've said on a couple of other videos but you know money's not everything money doesn't make you happy you need a certain amount to live to have a nice lifestyle i i you know i kind of admit that some of the happiest people in thailand and they've got nothing to be honest with you and I've experienced this myself, and it, it's a bit of an eye-opener, to be honest with you. Now, I saw a guy the other day, thought he's going around with a cycle rickshaw, which is like a bicycle with, you know, where someone sits in the back. He had some people in the back, he was probably like 65 plus, you know, and he was wheeling this, uh, you know, bicycle with these two tourists in the back. And the guy looked as happy as Larry. He was smiling, he was laughing, he was joking. Maybe they tipped him a little bit, I don't know. And he was, you know, nearly, well, not, not far off, you know, retirement age, but he was, you know, seemed as happy as Larry. And he, he you know, he really didn't look as if he had much money. <laughs> I don't know if he was rich, maybe he was rich. Money doesn't really, you know, make you happy. You can see this in Thailand a lot when you go around the country. Another thing I've learned through my life, every kind of thing you do has a reaction. If you do something pretty bad to people, you know, it's going to come back and bite you on the bum. You know, at some point in your life, maybe not now, maybe not next week, but sometime in the next few years, it's going to come back and bite you. So, you know, I always found that, you know, I try and now think this when I'm going about my daily life, you know. You know, if I do something that's not great, I think, hang on, this is going to have an a, you know, an effect on my life sometime in the future. It's going to bring something negative towards me and I, I don't want that anymore, you know. I've had enough negativity, bad things happen in my life. So, you know, I, I want to attract good things into my life and I found that, you know, since I started being a better person and, you know, giving more, not money, I don't really mean money, just giving more myself to people, uh, it seems to be coming back to me in bits and starts, not all the time, but you know, it is definitely improving my life and has improved my life. No end, which has a knock on effect and makes me happier because you don't get these negative things in your life, which let's be honest, none of us want negative things in our life. We want everything to be great, hunky and dory. And to be honest, I went about my life you know, not really, you know, quite selfishly, just uh, not really thinking about others, I'll be honest, you know, and just going through life like this and, you know, it, and doing, you know, sometimes not great things to people, you know, especially in Thailand, when I came to Thailand for the first time, you know, 
you know, did some things I maybe regret that, I, you know, I wouldn't talk about on YouTube, but sure they had a knock on effect and, you know, contributed to my downfall a bit in the first few years in Thailand. Now I know kind of the Thai philosophy now in Buddhism, you know, where they're, they're all doing good things for people. You know, that's why, you know, many, many Thais, you know, don't steal things or, you know, try and live a good life. They help you out. They see you on a motorbike stuck somewhere. They'll come and, you know, push you and, you know, give you a good deed, you know, push you to the next garage or try and help you. That's why my wife, when we're out in town once, some foreigners at a bus stop and then I like, I've gone to the toilet. I came back and she was like, talking to these foreigners down the other side. She'd taken them somewhere to help them find this bus and then we ended up missing the bus. This again, you know, she did a good deed. This in Buddhism is like what they do, you know, it is, you know, a good thing to do. It, it is what you're supposed to do, but this is something I never really did that much, you know. I tried to help people a little bit, but not to that extreme, you know. I wouldn't do that and miss a bus, you know. I would never have done that. But now I kind of rethink my life and think, okay, maybe I should take a, a leaf out of my wife's books and, you know, sometimes do these things that put you out. And that's the problem. They put you out. They, you know, they are difficult to do because, you know, that situation, we missed a bus. We had to wait another half an hour for a bus. <laughs> uh, at the time, I was a bit like, oh, you know, it was quite a few years ago when I first met her. I was like, well, why do you do that? Why don't you just come and get on the bus? And then she was like, oh, but these foreigners, you know, they were having a problem here. And, and then, I, you know, in hindsight, I look back now and I was like, why did I say that to her, you know? And that's how I used to be, you know? And that's why... I, trying to tell you to, you know, trying to be a better person will make you, you know, my life's, my wife's life is, you know, she's not really had any problems, to be honest with you, because she lives her life in a very, very good way. Thanks for listening, guys. Take it easy. Until next time.